Hey guys, you're here for a massive damage resistance breakdown and survivability. Damage resistance is when you reduce the amount of damage you should have taken. Damage output and damage received can take many forms. The higher your weapon's power level, the more damage it does, up to 20 more power than the enemy. You receive less damage if you're more overall power than the enemy. Also, you do less damage and take more damage when you're lower power overall compared to the enemy you're shooting. Not only does your gun's power matter, but the power of your enemy does too. Bachmaniti made an awesome chart that we'll be talking about today. A lot of people think resilience makes you more tanky, but it does not. It increases your overall shield, but that's only a few extra health. Useful in PvP. In terms of effectiveness, it gives you 15 more health, up to 201. Which is only like 10% more resistance, a very low return. The default damage resistance you see is when you activate your super, giving you about 80% resistance, unless you're using Golden Gun. God Mode brings that to the extreme. Basically, you only take 20% of the normal damage, so if a boss stomp does 100 damage, you only take 20 instead while you're in your super, giving you a tanky feel. By stacking resist mods, you can take more hits and survive longer in activities. The worst resist mods are elemental resists. Arc, Solar, and Void work against those types of elements. The first one gets 5% resistance, but after that you get less for each additional mod. So you get 5%, then 4.75, then 4.5, then 4.25. And it seems to follow this trend for each additional mod you stack. You can notice the same trend with Concussive Dampener, the best resist mod. The first one gives 15%, the second gives about 13%, and the third about 11%. So as you stack mods, the benefit goes down. This works the same when mixing and matching mods. If you added some concussive and some arc resist, you would notice the effect gets less and less as you add mods. This is because of how resistance is calculated. The formula is 1 minus the resist percentage multiplied times 1 minus each additional resist percentage. So if you're in a super with one concussive dampener, you would end up with 1 minus 0.8 times 1 minus 0.15. And that ends up being 83% resistance, which isn't 15% more, just a measly 3% more. The closer you get to 100% resistance, the less effective you will notice your mods are. So when you see this downward trend, every time you stack mods, it's still that 15% increase in resistance, it just doesn't add up that way. The other resist mods are different. These mods have diminishing returns. Those are the minor, major, and boss resists. The first one gives 10%, then about 9, then 7, then 5, and if you're using the formula, you will notice even less effect. It's not addition. 10 plus 9 plus 7 plus 5 is 31%, but you only end up getting about 27% resistance. Resistance is less effective as you stack mods naturally. Diminishing returns makes it even worse. Concussive Dampener works the best when stacking because it does not have these diminishing returns. Because of this concept, I would not run more than three of the same minor, major, or boss resist. If anything, I would run more Concussive Dampeners. This all depends on the type of enemies you're against, though. Each activity has red, orange, and yellow health enemies. Enemies with red health bars are minors. Enemies with orange health bars are majors. The yellow ones are either elites or bosses. Boss resist works on elites and bosses. Major resist works on orange bars. Minor resist works on red bars. Concussive dampener works on all three health bar colors. It just depends on the type of attack. If that attack does AoE, some type of explosion or some type of burn damage, that's covered by concussive. This also includes boss stomps and even radiolaria environmental damage. If you're against tons of red bar enemies, try three minor resist. If most of those enemies are taken, you should probably run three concussive instead. If you're sorting bosses, run four concussive. If you're against a lot of champions, run two boss resist. I would stay away from major resists because there are very few of them in activities. I would stay away from elemental resists because they have the least benefit. Sword blocking is a temporary resistance. Different sword types can have a slightly different resistance when blocking. 
but mostly this is dependent on the guard type you choose. Heavy Guard works great for more resistance. I would choose Sword Masters for increased charge rate and average resistance. The other guards are meh. To improve this further, you can wear Strongholds on Titan. This should max out your sword's block resistance. The best resist mods to run are Hive, Taken, or Fallen Barrier mods, sometimes all three. On the first hit from that enemy race, you take full damage. After that, you take 20% reduced damage for 10 seconds. This is a huge increase. And Taken enemies are the best. A Taken Captain is considered a Fallen and Taken Enemy Type Combatant. So if you have Fallen and Taken Barrier equipped, you will get both 20% resistances when he hits you. Taken Knights would activate Hive and Taken Barrier at the same time. That's 36% additional resistance. And the best part is that these mods use a different slot than the other resists we've talked about. In theory, the best all-purpose resistance build would have 3 Concussive Dampener, 1 Minor Resist, 1 Boss Resist, Taken Barrier, Fallen Barrier, and Hive Barrier. This should work great in 90% of activities. If you're against a lot of Fallen or Taken, you might want to try Risk Runner. This adds 50% resistance against Arc Damage after taking Arc Damage. If you like running past enemies, I recommend adding Striking Light. This adds 25% resistance while sprinting, perfect for general purposes. If you're making Warmind Cells, throw on Warmind's protection for 50% resistance. If you're getting charged with light, use Protective Light for 50% resistance while in red health. Use Overload to disrupt enemies, causing them to do 25% less damage. There are also a small number of other activity mods and exotics that can be used to increase resistance temporarily. But the biggest thing is having a way to regenerate health in combination with resist mods. Survivability is more than just taking hits. Recovery is the main factor. Not only does it regenerate health sooner, it also regenerates health faster. So health starts to come back faster after not taking damage, and it gives you more health per second while you're healing up. Protective Light seems to be a big success in keeping players alive in solo runs. For Warlocks, the Devourer ability makes you unkillable as long as you keep getting kills yourself. More passive playstyle would be using Well of Radiance, though. As long as you have cover, Rifts are pretty useful. Use a healing grenade while you're on the run, and your super if you panic, or for good DPS. Karnstein Armlets can grant health on melee kills. Titans have some good options right now. The God Mode glitch makes them unkillable, although it has its drawbacks. Top Tree Sentinel is great, because each melee kill gives health, and Bubble restores health and grants armor of light. But generally, I prefer Middle Tree Sentinel. The Void Detonators grant small amounts of health, and can clear large crowds quickly. Crest of Alpha Loopy can help with general survivability. Hunters use Night Stalker Invisibility and Recovery to stay alive. While this works most of the time, there are occasions you will still die while invisible. Wormhus Crown can help with general survivability. Recuperation, or better already, can grant health when picking up orbs of light. As far as weapons go, Crimson is great at keeping your health up in shorter ranges. Suros with Catalyst is also a good option for longer ranges. By combining resistance mods, high recovery, and a health regeneration ability, you'll notice that a lot of activities are easier to solo, so take what you will from it. Cheese forever, Guardian!